With the release of the Galaxy S21 series, Samsung is finally coming down at their price point. Now, at $799, it could be pretty expensive for a lot of people. Let's say instead you still want a near flagship level phone for less than 500 bucks. Well, there are a lot of mid-range phones that offer compelling deals, and I think one of your best deals is the Galaxy S20 FE. The Galaxy S20 FE was released at the end of last year and had many of the specs of the S20 series at $699, but you can find it for a lot better prices now and even find it for less than $500. But is it still worth it with the S21 in the picture? Let's talk about it. This is an OISO and this is my S20 FE review. When I first saw that the Galaxy S20 FE was plastic, my mind was drawn back to the S5 era because that was the last Samsung flagship that I used that had a plastic back and I was worried. And then when I actually started using it, I realized that this has no similarities with the S5 series. It feels a lot more premium, a lot denser, and it feels a lot more cohesive. I actually preferred the feeling of this in my hand over a lot of glass backed phones. And let me talk through why. First of all, I don't think I would ever be mistaken to think that this felt like glass, but it does feel very smooth and soft in your hand. And the way that it curves around the edges allows for a pretty large area that you can hold and grip onto the phone. So ergonomically, it fits very well in my hand and it's very comfortable to use even in one hand, despite having a pretty large footprint. I absolutely prefer the in-hand feel of this over my Note 20 Ultra from last year. And the other thing that I like better about it is the fact that it doesn't show off fingerprints nearly as badly. So the plastic back just doesn't have the same attracting of fingerprints, and so it generally looks better in most cases. Now, I also have a bias because I absolutely love this color. This kind of minty blue color reminds me of those five gum commercials from, was it the late 2000s or early 2010s? You know the ones that were like, how it feels to chew five gum. I'm pretty sure Five Gum introduced the world to ASMR before ASMR was a thing with those commercials. Outside of the visual and ergonomic design, there's another thing that I appreciate about having a plastic back phone. Now, I'm not a person to use a case on my phone because I never find cases fit comfortably in my hand. And so I always prefer just using my phone bare. Now, obviously that leads to durability concerns, but every time I'm using a glass back phone, I get worried about where I put it down because I don't want to put it on a granite countertop where it might scratch or maybe like put it on a rock when I go hiking or anything like that. I have a worry that it's going to scratch the delicate glass back and then I'm going to have this huge scratch that I always mourn when I look at the phone. And I didn't have that problem with the Galaxy S20 FE. Now granted it's plastic so plastic can scratch but I just wasn't nearly as worried about it. And so it was just a huge kind of boon or a huge benefit being able to just put it down anywhere. Adding to the design positives is the fact that it doesn't have a curved screen. Now, visually, I do think it looks worse than other phones or less premium than other Samsung phones, but we've seen that now Samsung is switching to flat screens for the S21 and S21 Plus, and I think there's a good reason for that. Now, frankly, I don't have nearly as many uh, issues with touching the edges of the screen on kind of more modern Samsung phones, but even still with the, with the Note 20 Ultra, I still had that issue and I always felt like the phone was going to fly out of my hand. I don't have that problem at all with the S20 FE. And so I really appreciate the flat screen. And that screen looks really good. Now, technically it's only 1080p, which doesn't really matter to me, but it is also the 120 hertz that we've seen on other Samsung flagships recently. Now, as I've mentioned before, I'm not super sensitive to refresh rate, but I will say that this did feel significantly smoother than my experience using the new iPhone 11 Pro. I don't know if that was because of the refresh rate, I think it was, but I will say that I appreciate having 120 hertz refresh rate on a reasonably priced flagship. If Samsung had cut the 120 hertz display as well as having the plastic back and some other features, I would say that this would feel a lot more like a Galaxy A series than a Galaxy S series. And so I think the screen probably keeps it as a Galaxy S series. Using this phone feels incredibly smooth and fast with the 120 hertz, eight gigs of RAM, a Snapdragon 865 processor, and the base storage of 128 gigs. Now, Performance is pretty consistent with a couple dips here and there, but generally it performs just as well as most other flagships. 
it also is nice that I got around seven to eight hours of screen on time pretty consistently with this phone. And that's using it quite aggressively. Also decided to not cut out wireless charging in this mid-range flagship. If only other manufacturers would follow their lead. You know what else Samsung didn't seem to cut back on? The cameras. Now, there aren't any crazy 50X zoom or 100X zoom lenses on here, but otherwise you'll find very similar cameras to the S28 series. And as a result, the pictures that come out of this phone are, are incredible as expected. I'll admit, I usually find Samsung's pictures to be quite appealing in terms of the color profile, the saturation, and the sharpness. While some other people don't really prefer them, I really appreciate it. I understand they might not be the most accurate or true to life, but I appreciate being able to just take a picture and share it with someone rather than having to edit it before I put it on social media or send it to one of my friends. The biggest question that I have for any mid-range phone is whether I'm comfortable bringing it around and not having to bring another phone around to use as my primary camera phone. And I will say that it's almost 100% true with the Galaxy S20 FE. Now, what I found from my Note 20 Ultra review is that there are situations that I do appreciate a 5X or 10X zoom lens that I kind of missed while using the S20 FE. But those were kind of few and far between. For the most part, every single picture coming out of this phone was incredibly impressive, and it handled most of the, phone, most of the pictures that I wanted to take. Now let's talk about software. As I've said before in other Samsung reviews, I really appreciate what One UI has come to be in the last couple years. I really enjoy the stock launcher. I really enjoy exploring and, and having all these features. And I think One UI is probably one of my favorite skins of Android. Now, admittedly, it's not perfect. There are a number of duplicate apps. If you get a carrier unlocked phone, you might have some bloatware on your phone. And generally, software updates are still a little bit of a question mark. But the Galaxy S20 FE got the Android 11 update in January. And while that's not fantastic, since it's like five months after the original Android release, it is significantly better than a lot of Samsung flagships in the past. And so I did appreciate having that kind of new skin of Android on what is kind of a mid-range device. Are you going to be the first one with new updates with the Galaxy S20 FE? Absolutely not. But if software updates don't matter the most to you, then this should be absolutely fine. Finally, let's talk about the price. At the original price of $699, I would have not recommended this at all. But through discounts and buy one get ones and everything else, the Galaxy S20 FE could now be available for less than $500 depending on when it, where you buy it. And I think that's an absolutely compelling price when compared to kind of flagship prices. But with the Galaxy S21, you now have a more modern alternative at $799 with maybe even lower prices with some promotions. After a couple weeks of using the Galaxy S21, I'll make a more direct comparison. But I can say for now that the Galaxy S20 FE is still a very compelling phone, even with the S21 with just a few hundred dollars higher. The Galaxy S20 FE is an absolutely incredible deal at under $500 and it might be one of the best, but you'll have to see in an upcoming video, my phone's under 500 season two, whether it's the best phone that you can get for under $500. Until then, if you are a Samsung fan and you want a new flagship level phone for under 500 bucks, you should get the Galaxy S20 FE. If not, keep an eye out for other phones and I'll be sure to review more of those phones on this channel coming up soon. If you aren't already, be sure to get subscribed and let me know down in the comments what you think about the Galaxy S20 FE. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.